Bonjour, and today we're covering l'indicatif passé antérieur. Does this sound familiar? Have you ever stumbled upon this tense reading a book or ever? Le passé antérieur. So if you don't know that tense yet, don't worry, I got your back. We're going to cover this all together today. And within 10 minutes, you'll have a much better understanding of what a tense does, how to form it. And there is an exercise at the end. So please bear with me so that you can do the exercise and complete the exercise at the end. And this lesson, this video, this short video will have had an impact on the quality of your French in the future. And that's really, really my purpose with these videos is that you get something actionable out of these lessons. So are you with me? Today, we're covering the indicative passé antérieur and we're going to learn how to form it, how to use it. First thing, how do we form l'indicatif passé antérieur? Compound tense, just like le passé composé, le plus que parfait, le futur antérieur. Four compound tense in the indicative mo mode in French. And this is one of the four, probably the least known. Not a lot of people use that tense, even today, or especially today, because in the past it was more common, but now that tense is in danger. So I'm not going to ask you to donate money to save that tense, but it's danger, an endangered tense of the French language. So why let that tense die when we have an impact, we, when we can revive that tense and give it some color and enrich our lives and the lives of other people, inspire them. But back to the tense. Now, we have three groups of verbs in French, E-R, I-R, R-E. And we're going to learn how to form it with the auxiliary verb avoir. Put avoir in the passé simple. And then you connect a past participle of a verb and that gives you le passé antérieur. J'ai chanté. I had sung. Basically, that's how we could translate it in that example. Tu eus chanté. You had sung. Il, elle, on eu chanté. He, she, we had sung. Nous eûmes chanté. Nous eûmes chanté. Does it, doesn't it sound nice? Vous eûtes chanté. Il, elle, zur chanté. This is for group one. We have every time the same auxiliary verb in the passé simple, but that forms here the passé antérieur. For group two verbs, exactly the same for the auxiliary verb. That's that amount of time that you saved. Studying that tense is not that complex all of a sudden because one column is exactly the same as the other and oh, guess what? The third column is also exactly the same as the second one. So all you need to know for that part of the lesson is to study how to conjugate the verb avoir in the passé simple. And then you can just connect a past participle to that and bingo, there you have it, fireworks. When you see how we use it in an example, maybe it'll motivate you to use the passé simple as well, which works beautifully with those two. When you have a stick of mozzarella, you know, you have a bunch of herbs, you need to put them together. They need to dance together. Basil, mozzarella, you know, it works. And then you add a tomato and it works. And the recipe that we have with passé simple and passé antérieur is just like that little known ingredient that really enriches the flavor of a meal that no one knows about, or almost no one. Now, of course, since it's a compound tense, you have verbs that form with auxiliary verb avoir and others with auxiliary verb être. Être au passé simple. Fu, fu, fu. Je fus rentré, tu fus rentré, il, elle, on fut rentré. We had come back. You had come back. He, she, we had come back. Nous fûmes rentrés, vous fûtes rentrés. Il, elle, furent rentrés. This is for group one. Again, if you know the first column, you know the second and the third one. That's how easy it is. Fu, 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 fume, fut, fur. Je fus devenu. I had become. Je fus guéri. I had healed. However, you know that in French, we have some verbs that work with auxiliary verb être and others with avoir. And guérir works with auxiliary verb avoir. So technically it shouldn't be in that column, but 
for the sake of the example, it makes really uh, for a good example to take that column um, and to use guéri, even though guéri theoretically works with auxiliary verb avoir. Être guéri being a passive use of the verb. Now, I believe that you have enough information to form the passé antérieur. And this is a perfect moment to discover how we make sentences. This is the second part of the lesson. Use. Le passé antérieur is used to express accomplished facts, mostly brief and of a fixed duration, taking place before another action in the passé simple. So here, if you visualize a timeline, you have passé simple on, I mean, on the, like if you're looking at the screen here, so that's here. The passé simple is happening. Um, something is happening in the passé simple here. And the passé antérieur is happening before that thing here. Quand le robot eut terminé de lire la Bible, il inclina sa tête humaine bionique vers les étoiles. When the robot had finished reading the Bible. So basically, I'm, I'm like here on the timeline. I'm here. When the robot had finished reading the, the Bible, it tilted the bionic human head towards the, the, the stars. And so, you know, an action happens before another one. And when the robot had finished reading the Bible, it happened before the moment where he tilts its head and stares at the stars. And so, you know, in a nutshell, passé antérieur, the action happening before something happens. And that works with the passé simple. Okay, so of course, I invite you to um, review the lesson about the passé simple so you can better understand how to form the passé simple that works hand in hand with the passé antérieur. Beautiful combination, mozzarella and basil. And, and, and yeah, that's for it. You could say also, uh, feta cheese and melon, cantaloupe especially. This is a really nice combination. That was for the first example. The second example. Akmat sabra le salmanazar de champagne aussitôt que nous fûmes rentrés dans le bunker. Akmat, Akmat cracked open a salmanazar of champagne as soon as we had entered the bunker, the bunker. So basically, we had entered the bunker happens. Does it happen before or after the moment that uh, Akhmat uh, cracks open the Salmanazar? Huh? You know, they enter before. They enter before. And because they enter before, that's the action happening before. That's the action in the passé antérieur. The other one. The passé simple is happening after. So first, playing with my hands here, first, first, they enter the bunker and then, bingo, they crack open the Salmanazar and cheers to everyone, santé, because it's delicious. That's what happens when you celebrate something in a bunker. Okay, well, that wraps it up for this lesson today. We covered how to form the passé antérieur, a little known compound tense of the indicative mode in French, three groups of verbs. We've learned that we know, we need to know how to form le verbe avoir in the passé simple, and then also the verbe être in the passé simple in order to make that tense come to life. And then we learn that the passé antérieur is used to express accomplished facts, mostly brief and fixed duration. It's fixed, okay? The moment that you crack open the bottle of champagne doesn't last for hours unless you shoot someone with a video and then you slow down the speed so much that it takes like five hours for the, you know, the, the cork to just get uh, out of the bottle. And then, of course, then you could say that that action lasts for a while, but mostly it doesn't happen like that. You know, when you crack open a bottle of champagne, it's just really, really fast. And then, you know, it's the moment to celebrate and that takes a short time. Celebration don't, doesn't last a lot of time. And we see that during Christmas, you know, it, it's very, very short that moment. It's like, yeah, it's, but this is another topic. 
So back to what I was saying, we learn how to use it. And the passé, composé, the passé antérieur is the action happening before something else happens in the passé simple. That's right here on the timeline. Right now is the great, great time to click the link below the video and complete this exercise and find out whether or not you can use that tense because you will, you will get asked a bunch of questions and I'm going to test you, test your knowledge and your ability to stay focused for like 10 or 12 minutes about um, admittedly not extremely exciting topic of French grammar, although I found it pretty exciting myself. So hopefully I will have infused a little bit of that passion in your heart so that you can keep learning French in a way that is a bit more complex and intricate and interesting than what I find online, which is mostly uninteresting. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you soon in another video. And in the meantime, well, good luck for the test.